Hey everyone, Jethi Patinho here, founder of Stock Market for Pinoy's.com, and welcome to Take the Leap, Invest Within the Week. So this is a comprehensive seminar for the stock market beginner. And at the end of this video tutorial series, you will learn how to invest in the stock market conveniently and strategically so that you can achieve financial freedom and abundance. Now, what will you learn in this seminar? In this first video, we'll talk about the goals of investing and the reasons why you should be investing. It's very, very important to have a solid grasp of this so that you know your motivation on why you're doing this. In the next video, that's the only time we'll talk about the basics of the stock market. So how does it work? Who do you need to talk to? How do you make money? Etc. Etc. Then in the third video, we'll talk about the investing strategies. Now, again, I'd like to emphasize the strategy here because there are different strategies for investing and depending on what you choose, that's what will determine how long and how much time you need to dedicate to the stock market. Then in video number four, this is my favorite video, practical investing. We'll talk about how to invest in the stock market in the most convenient way possible. And then finally, number five is taking the leap. So this is where I'll give you the action steps. But for now, we're with the goals of investing. More specifically, we'll talk about the three goals of investing. Okay, let's get started. Goal number one is to beat inflation. And inflation is simply defined as the increase of prices of goods and services over time. It's simply you need more and more to purchase less and less. I remember that when my mom was still a college student, she told me that her allowance was only five pesos per day. And the UP Eco Cheap cost only 35 centavos per trip and a complete meal was only one peso. So at three meals per day, she would be able to set aside one peso per day for her monthly dorm fee of 30 pesos. And, and just imagine that right now the UP Eco Cheap costs seven, six, seven pesos and in a meal it costs 50 pesos and above. So prices really have changed. Today, we need more and more to purchase less and less. Whether we like it or not, the prices of food, transportation, rent, electricity, and other necessities will go up. So here we have the Philippines inflation rate from 1995 to 2012. And if you notice, it's sometimes going up, sometimes going down. Right now, our inflation rate is at its all-time low. It's a little above 2%. But this can't be maintained. Because in the past, it has gone up a little under 10%. So we can expect that to happen in the future. On average, our inflation rate is at 5.5% per year. Now, you may be thinking, okay, ano kinalaman yan? What does 5.5% per year mean? On a daily basis, we can't even feel it. Hindi yan mararamdaman. But in the long term, the effects are very, very significant. Actually, in the long term, nakakagulat siya kapag naramdaman mo na. And I'm gonna show you in this picture. Okay, now, how much does your dream cost? Let's say that your dreams, yung, yung pangarap mo, whether that be a dream house, uh, a place to travel, or a dream car, you know, uh, let's just put it at 1 million pesos. For example, that's how much your dream is worth. Okay, and today, the price is 1 million pesos. Now, because of inflation, next year, it's not going to be 1 million pesos. It's going to go higher. Next year, it's going to be 1 million and 53,000 pesos. And after five years, it's going to be 1.3 million pesos. And look at the table below. After 20 years, yung 1 million na pangarap, your 1 million peso dream already costs 2.8 million pesos. So, for example, if it takes you 20 years before you can come up with a 1 million, the supposed 1 million dream that you have, well, you won't be able to buy it. You'll only be able to buy 36% of your dreams. Dahil nagmahal na ang pangarap mo. Your dream just got expensive. Now, another point that I'd like to make. It's about the difference of wealth and poverty. On the blue line, I'm showing you the cost of living. So these are your expenses. And it's going up a little 
little by little, well, because of inflation. If your income, the red line, is growing lower than inflation, so the things you are buying, your lifestyle, your expenses, it's growing higher and higher because of inflation. But if your income grows higher but doesn't go higher than inflation, then what's happening is that you are creating poverty. Okay? You are becoming poorer and poorer. That's how poverty is created. Now, if your income is growing higher than inflation, then you are creating wealth. And with investing, you can easily grow your income higher than inflation. Now, take note, it's going to be a steady increase of income. When you start investing, your income is going to grow. It's gonna grow slowly at first. Then towards the end, it's going to get higher and higher because you have invested more money. That's the important part here. And this graph, it shows you already why the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. The reason is not because of the government. It's not because of uh, hindi suerte or pinanganak na mahirap. It's because people don't know how to invest. People don't know how to grow their income above inflation. So there's always poverty. Only 1% are investing in the stock market, which means... 99% are investing, I don't know, in lotto or in bank account and savings account. And that's not growing your money above inflation. And that's scary. That's the reason why we are a poor country because we are a financially illiterate country. We don't know how to invest above inflation. So this is the prime importance of investing. And this should be your first goal. Beat inflation. Beat inflation. If you beat inflation, you are creating wealth. Let's go to goal number two, which is to save up for your retirement. Now, I know some of you might be thinking that retirement is still 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. But it's still very important to prepare. Here's the reason why. When your income stops, when you retire, who will provide for your basic needs? So, Remember that you still need food, you still need shelter, you need transportation, you need to have hobbies and some form of entertainment, and, and you're also most probably, you're going to have medical expenses. Now, I'd like to share with you right now how much you will be spending when you retire. I want you to go through this exercise with me as you're listening to this. Step one, ask yourself this. If you were to retire today, how much would you be spending per month? Okay, if you were to retire today, how much would you be spending per month? 20,000, 30,000? Just give an estimate. Now, step two is, how many years from now will you retire? Okay, so for example, if um, you're 25 years old now and you plan on retiring when you're 65, then you have 40 more years before your retirement age. How many years from now will you retire? And then finally, in step three, multiply your answer in step one with a corresponding factor in the table here to the right. If you're going to retire in 40 years, then multiply your answer by 7.6. If you're going to retire in 30 years, then multiply your answer by 4.6. Now, what are these factors? These factors are actually the effect of inflation on your basic living expenses. The answer is how much you'll be spending per month for your retirement. Now, it's going to get higher again because of inflation. Inflation really is a thing to beat when, when you're investing. For example, uh, you would be living on 20,000 per month. And for example, you're 30 years old. So that means you're going to retire in 35 years. So in the table, 35 means times 5.9. So what you do is get 20,000 times 5.9 equals 118,000 per month. So that's how much on a monthly basis you'll be spending when you retire. Now, if we multiply that by 12, you know, to get the yearly amount, you would need 1.4 million pesos per year, starting from the time when you retire. Take note, your income has stopped. Wala nang perang pumapasok, but you're still spending, and you're gonna spend that amount. Okay, so 1.4 million pesos per year. And in this example, we assume that you're going to start retiring at age 65. The average age of the Filipino is now at 85 years, 
Meaning, you still have 20 years to go and every year you'd be spending 1.4 million or higher because, well, because of inflation, uh, once again. So this amount, who will be paying for it? If you don't prepare, here's what can happen. Your children will be supporting you. And you know what? It's going to be at the same time that they are building their own family. Okay, let's walk through this. For example, you're 30 years old and you're also starting your own family. By the time you're 65, your kids will probably be around 25, 30 years old. And that's also the time that they are starting their family. So, ang maglalaban for the resources, the people who will be competing for resources are you, the 65-year-old you, and your 1-year-old, 2-year-old apo. And this is happening right now. And frankly, do you want it to continue happening? If you don't prepare for your retirement, that can happen. Would you like that to happen? In the big picture, what happens when you are unprepared for your retirement? Let's say, for example, that that's you when you're still starting, when you're still young, and you're growing your money. You're growing your money. And then you start a family. So that's still you. But since you're starting a family, your money is going to your children. So they're getting an advantage because you're giving them the advantage. Now, at the end of your years, at the end of your productive years, you know, when you retire, this can happen. Okay, so you're not prepared for your retirement. So what's going to happen there is that your children will experience this. Okay? Because they have to support you. So their income is also going to go down a bit. Their level of financial stability is going to go down with it. Now, take note, that's the same time that they are also starting a family. So their resources are also going to their grandkids. Now, what's going to happen after you pass away? Your children, since they didn't learn from you how to prepare for their retirement, most probably your children also will be relying on their children, on your grandkids. Here's what will happen. Here's your children in their retirement, and their grandkids will be the ones supporting them. No wealth is being built. Everything is lost in the end. Aakyat, then bababa. It's going to go up, then going down. Up, down, up, down. There's no improvement. But if you prepare for your retirement, here's what will happen. Again, here's you when you're when you're earning, then you start a family and your children, you're supporting them and they're able to go up and higher. Now, here, here's you prepared for your retirement. There's no decline because you're prepared. And eventually when you pass away, you know, your wealth is there. It's stable. It didn't go away. So your children, they can build a family without a decline. Your grandkids they keep on going up. When your children retire, it's also going to be stable. They're also going to be stable. You taught them well. So what's going to happen? Okay, that's their wealth when they pass away. And the grandkids, they get to build on it. You see what's happening here? Wealth is being built. If you are prepared for your retirement, you are able to build your wealth. Not just your own the future generation's wealth, the wealth of your children and your children's children. And again, this is the reason why the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. The rich know how to prepare for their retirement. So they're able to build their wealth and their children's wealth. But the poor, this is what's happening. Ouch. Aakyat bababa, aakyat bababa. There's no improvement. So, napag-iiwanan. People who don't know how to invest, they get left behind. Now, now, this is the third goal. Financial freedom and abundance. And with this goal, I'd like to give you two things. The difference between active and passive income. Active income is when you're trading your time for money. So essentially, that's what a job is. Because, you know, you work and you get paid. You work and you get paid. When you stop working, you don't get paid. You stop getting paid. 
Okay, so that's active income. So even if you're a freelancer, if you, even if you're an executive, even if you're a doctor, lawyer, uh, professional, no matter how high the income is, if you stop working and you don't get paid, that's called active income. Now, passive income is that when you trade your money for more money, essentially, hindi na tale ang oras mo. You can stop working and money will continue flowing. So with passive income, you can stop working and yet money will flow to you, provided that you have built enough wealth. You have built enough money. Your investments has grown to a certain point. Now, I'd like to make a difference here between active and passive income. There are times that mapapagod ka, you'll get sick, you'll get tired, you'll get exhausted, you'll get burned out. And when that happens, the income stops. But with passive income, you have to remember that money doesn't get sick. Money doesn't get tired. Money doesn't get burned out. All it needs is a good master, a good investor. And if you're a good investor, you can command your money. You can enslave your money to work hard and make more money for you. And if you have enough money, eventually, you'll achieve this state. When your passive income is already enough, is already greater than your lifestyle expenses, the money that you are earning from your investments is enough to support your lifestyle. Meaning you don't need to work anymore. Meaning you don't need to trade your time for money anymore. That's why it's called freedom. Because you're already detached from having to work for money. And with freedom comes the abundance. Because when you no longer need to work, well, you're free to do anything that you want. And most probably, that's the only time when you can think of others. Because you're already set. All your needs have been taken care of. So, you're going to take care of the other people who haven't reached this state yet. That's why it's abundance. Now, I would like to share with you a book. The book is called The Millionaire Mind, and I love this book. It's, it was written by Thomas J. Stanley, he's a PhD, and what he did was he studied the lifestyle of the millionaires in America, hundreds of them. I think their number was around 700 plus. Okay, and he studied their lifestyle. He asked, what are these millionaires doing on a daily basis, on a regular basis, on a monthly basis? What are the activities that they like doing? And here's the thing. These are what financially free people do. So over here, we're going to see the top activities of millionaires based on a 30-day diary. The number one activity is socializing with children and grandchildren. Wow! Nakikipaglaro lang sa mga apo. And you know what? Now that I'm seeing my parents, they're now, they're now lolos and lolas, uh, it just gives them so much joy to be able to play with their apos and teach them, tell stories, read books. And these are people who are able to do that on a regular basis. They don't need to worry about it. Next. Entertaining close friends. Next, planning and studying investments. Of course, if you're a millionaire, if you're financially free, you have to plan and study investments. Look at the next number. <laughs> Taking photographs. So it's really your hobby. What do you like doing? Okay, watching children and grandchildren play sports. Okay, now take note. Some of the sports events, they're held on weekdays. And... If you have work on a weekday, that means you can't watch your children or grandchildren play sports. Because you have work on that day, but if you're financially free, you don't have to work, then feel free to go watch the game and cheer for them. Next, consulting with an investment advisor, studying art and investments, attending religious services, jogging and running. So this is a lifestyle of the millionaire mind. These are their top activities. Okay, now I'm gonna show you this time their 12-month diary. Number one is consulting a tax expert. Okay, I believe that this is very, very reasonable since millionaires are the ones who are paying the most taxes because their income is high, their taxes are also high. So they need to consult a tax expert in order to legally minimize their taxes. Okay, number two is going to museums, community, civic activities, 
gardening, raising funds for charity. See, there's the abundance. Next is attending sporting events, association activities, watching Broadway plays, attending fundraising balls. So that's what it's like to have a millionaire lifestyle. Basically, what I see here is they're free to do whatever they want. And you know what? I believe that should be the goal of everyone here. It's not just beat inflation, not just prepare for retirement. You know, it, it's step by step. Those are important. But ultimately, what we're going for here is financial freedom and abundance so that we can help others. We're almost at the end of the video, and I hope you learned a lot. So I'm, I want to give you an action step. Here it is. Make an investing goal and put it on paper and put it where you'll see it frequently. Okay? So whatever piece of paper you have near you right now, write it, write your investing goal. So here's an example of an investing goal. I'm investing my way to financial freedom this 2013. What this does is that it makes you think about financial freedom. It makes you think that, hey, I need to learn how to invest. I'm committing myself to financial freedom. I'm gonna build my wealth and my future generation's wealth and the future and so on. Okay, so it could be very specific to the point that I'm going to set aside 10% of my salary every month for investing. Okay, so doesn't mean you'll actually do it, but put it on writing, put it on paper. That way, you'll have more effect. Now, this is the end of the video. In the next video, we'll talk about the basics of the stock market and you'll get access to that video in two or three days from now. In the meantime, thank you very much for listening. Please put your comments and questions below and you no know, share your thoughts there and I'll be reading and responding to them personally. Until then, work hard, work smart, and make your money work hard for you.